Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In today's build, we're going to be making a Turkish twist fighter. That's a type of Damascus. We're going to layer 1084 and 15 and 20 and twist it up. Here's an example of a Turkish twist fighter made by master smith Michael Quessenberry. If we can get close to this, I'll be pretty happy. The cool thing about the Turkish twist is that the more you grind into it, the cooler the pattern looks. Here's an example of what that looks like in the different depths. Let's see if we can make it happen. We're going to get this stack nice and hot and forge weld it all together in one solid block. Now that I'm confident it's all forge welded, we're going to start drawing this out into a long thin bar. This will take a bunch of heats. I don't like to go too fast because I don't want to shear the layers apart. So we're going to take our time and draw this out. We're going to be shooting for bars that are 5 eighths of an inch thick, so that gets really long. I end up cutting this bar and forging them separately, and I'll do that pretty soon. I'm getting close to my twisting dimension, so I moved to kiss blocks so that I can get exactly the right thickness. And here I've already separated it into two bars. Now I'm just doing some final flanning to get ready for the twist. Now I'm taking that first bar and I'm taking it to my homemade twisting machine. And we're gonna twist this and make it look like all thread. These bars are so long I had to heat them in sections. You can see it's only twisting half. Then I'm gonna heat the other half and twist it. My buddy Jared decided to take a video. Now it's time to twist the other bar. Remember, these are supposed to alternate. Do you see a problem? Yeah, I forgot to change the direction on the drill. So now, luckily I caught it and I'm twisting the other half the other direction. Now I'm just flattening out these bars in the press and just kind of compressing them a little bit and making them more square because right now they're round and we're going to need to stack them up.
Okay, so we got the bars all twisted. The only issue I had was when I twisted the second bar, because um, again, these were cut in half, uh, I forgot to switch the direction. So luckily, I only twisted half of it, because um, I only heated up half of it. And then I remembered, so one of these bars I'm not going to use, so we're just going to have a three bar um, twist. So here you can see they alternate, so we'll do a three bar um, Turkish twist. Next step, going to grind all these down um, so we get rid of all the little ripples and then weld them together and then back in the forge. The twist pattern is one of those where you probably lose the most material. There's just so much grinding to get rid of the twist marks, you just lose so much. I decided to move over to the surface grinder and make this way easier. Now it's time to forge weld the three bars together and make a billet we can make a knife out of. It's important at this stage to get the billet really, really hot. We want the grain and the steel to kind of grow together and merge those endpoints. Now the billet is good and forge welded, we can start drawing it out. This rolling mill is an excellent tool for drawing out and having it just a constant thickness on the billet. One really important aspect of a Turkish twist is that at the tip, you want those layers to come together. So if you just cut the knife out, it's gonna look odd. So you need to forge the tip in. Here we are after forging. Uh, I may do another forging round on it, but for now I just want to take the scale off it just to show you guys what it looks like. And we're really close, like there just may be um, some pieces here that I might want to forge a little bit and then I'm going to end up just um, taking the tang. It was a little more steel than I actually needed for this. But let's take the scale off and see what it looks like. Here's the billet after grinding off. Um, I definitely still have some forging to do on this. Um, I'm going to have to bring this to a full point on forging because I, I just want that pattern. So this blade is going to have to definitely be forged to shape because um, I don't want to cut any of these off. So definitely still a bit of work to do uh, at the anvil. I'm just out of time folks. But you can start to see um, the way the pattern, let me see if I can get this up a little closer. You can see the way the pattern starts to form here. And as I, I um, grind into this, the pattern is going to get better and better. But um, just wanted to show you guys that. Definitely coming together as a, as a Turkish twist. I think it'll look pretty cool. After looking at the billet for a while, I just wasn't happy. There's a lot of forging that needs to still happen on this billet.
One very different thing about this knife is I didn't really have a plan going in of what I wanted it to look like, which is very strange for me. I usually have a design that I work towards. So really, I'm deciding at the anvil what I want this blade to look like. And you'll see it changes a little bit as we go. Here I'm working on the tang just to know how much steel I'm going to have for the blade before I do too much blade contouring. Now I'm back to working on the blade, and at this point, I've kind of decided what I want this to be. And it's going to be more of a drop point with a slight recurve, and you'll see how it changes into that kind of blade. One thing you don't want to do with this kind of Turkish twist is forge in the bevels. Because that's just going to thin out your steel and you'll see in a little bit that grinding into a Turkish twist is very important. Now I'm starting to put that draw point in and I really like the way this knife is shaping up now. For the final touch, I'm just starting to put in the recurve, doing some final touches on the profile, and we're almost done the forging. So here's the blade after forging. I thought I would get away from the typical buoy, so I went with something a little different, a bit of a drop point. Um, with a recurve, kind of slender. Um, eventually this will have, I think, um, a really big guard, a uh, swooping guard to come down here. So uh, a big ass guard. Um, so I haven't quite figured that part out yet, but um, it's uh, about a quarter inch thick. So uh, it's got a little meat to come off it to, um, to get down into the twist. So let's just grind the profile and then grind into it and see what we get. You'll notice I'm not taking a lot off the profile here at the grinder. Uh, that's why I wanted to forge this to shape so I didn't distort any of the pattern with cutting into the billet. So here it is after grinding the profile a little bit. Uh, I've also done a test etch. I'll bring this in just a little bit. You can see it's still bars. I'm not really seeing, it's tough for you guys to see this, but um, I'm not really seeing those stars in it yet, but it's still pretty thick. And I haven't ground the bevels yet. So I've got the center line. Let's go do bevels. And then I think you're going to see what I want you to see. So 
So here's the blade after preheat treat grinding. Uh, I took a surface conditioning belt to it just so you guys would uh, would see the pattern better when I etch it. So let's go give it a dip in some ferric chloride. So here it is folks after the test etch. You can see the the pattern change um, through here you've got the the kind of these little stars that are starting to happen in the center uh, and then these kind of spirals so I think it looks really cool uh, and remember this is still you know pretty thick it's like a sixteenth at the edge um, so this will get better as it, we grind into it and we'll start to see more like up here like here hopefully down here so um, I think it I think it's exactly what I wanted, and um, I'm really looking forward to finishing this knife out. Unfortunately, after looking at the blade, I found that it didn't have a warp, it had a twist. So here I'm fixing it, and I gotta go through that whole cycle again. After another cycle of heat treating, it's better, still got a slight twist, but I'll fix it in grinding. So here's the blade after grinding. Um, this one was a tough one um, because the, well, the spine was perfectly straight. This was off a little bit, so I had to grind some off here and some off here just to get it nice and straight. But you can see it's perfectly straight now. So now I'm going to um, square up the corners. You can see. The three little dimples here, that's from uh, doing a hardness test, and this blade came out at 59 and a half. So, just about perfect. Let's square up these corners on the mill, and uh, then get to some hand sanding. This is an eighth inch end mill, and they're pretty brittle, and I've used this one a lot, and right here, it breaks. After putting in a new end mill, I can finish squaring off the shoulders. So let's take a quick look at where we are so far. I've got it sanded to 220. Uh, it's looking really good. Now uh, I'm going to turn my attention a little bit on the guard. So let's take a look at that. So here's what I'm thinking for the guard. A really big S guard with these kind of spade um, kind of tips on the end. There'll be a little piece of gold uh, engraving, gold inlay on here and gold inlay on this spacer. So if you remember this, the part that I twisted the wrong direction, this is what we're going to use to make the guard. So let's forge this out. I'm going to actually forge this flat with the spades on either end and then forge, widen this out, probably about here, uh, because I want to mill this and then we'll, we'll curve it into the shape after. I start out at the anvil just doing the ends and the center part that's going to get slotted to go on the knife.
To make my life a little easier, I go to the press and just flatten this out a bit. And now finally back to the press to get this all nice and flat because we're going to be doing a little milling on it. All right, so I've got the blade all sanded to 800. Um, so happy with that. I've got the guard. Um, it's all flat now. Uh, now we're going to do the slot for the guard. So that's why I kept it flat so that I could mill that. Uh, then we're going to put it on. Then we're going to bend these um, so it'll just be easier that way. So off to the mill. Okay, let's see where we're at with this build. Um, I've got the guard roughed out. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with these little spades at the end of each one, but I'll figure that out later. I've got this Damascus spacer, a piece of mammoth molar from an old project that I didn't end up using, but I think it's going to go nicely on this one. And then a piece of African blackwood that I haven't drilled yet that's going to go there. I think the brown comes off really well with the mammoth molar and then I think we're going to do some gold inlay in the spacer and then in kind of the end of the spades here just a little accent. So let's drill the handle. As I was grinding the guard it occurred to me that I need a pin here and I don't have a gold pin so I figured I would change all of that engraving to be silver. So let's take a look at where we are so far. Got everything kind of fit up, um, the spacer, I've got the guard kind of done to 220, but now we got to bend the uh, quillions, whatever you want to call them, the actual guard. So this one to bend down here and this one to bend up. So we're going to do that with the oxy torch. I was a little worried at first that this would be hard. It actually ended up being really easy and uh, went without a problem at all. Here I'm just trying to get the perfect curve to the guard, uh, just so that it feels and looks really cool. Well folks, um, in trying to grind this a little bit more I just blew out another chip. It's just really, really chippy. Um, I don't think this mammoth molar was ever stabilized. Uh, it's just coming apart way too easily. So. I'm going to abandon this piece. We're going to go with some other material. So I've got a new spacer set up here. This is a uh, maple burl with a piece of carbon fiber in the center. I think that'll look pretty cool. Uh, and there's some kind of different colored wood in here. And then the African blackwood on the end. So let's get this glued up. Now it's time to move on to the silver inlay. Here I'm using the pneumatic engraver just to make a channel and then I'm going to put some dovetails in it and then we'll start to hammer in our silver. I wasn't happy with this section. I end up pulling out the silver inlay and doing some file work here, but you'll see I do some more inlay. So here's how we're doing so far. I've got the guard all um, sanded uh, to about 400. Um, finished the spacer. Um, you saw me um, 
you know, put the center in. I wasn't happy with it because I put it too deep, so I ended up making that just a, a channel there for some, just a little relief. And then put two strips, so uh, a strip on the top and a strip on the bottom of silver. So I think that'll look uh, even better. I got the handle mostly done, uh, sanded to 220. Now I'm going to heat treat these two. Because if you, these are Damascus, if you don't heat treat them, they won't etch the same as the blade. So I'm going to heat treat these. I'll cover them with anti-scale first since they're all nice and sanded. Then I'll finish sand the blade, maker's mark, put it all together. In my opinion, not putting your maker's mark on a custom knife is like not signing a painting. It's a must. You should always put a maker's mark if you're proud of your work. Now it's time to do the final etch on the blade and the fittings. We're almost done this build, folks.